All right, so um, let's go ahead and get let's go ahead and get with it um, because we only have about an hour on these Zoom calls, so uh, I want to jump in and, and go ahead and get started. So uh, the whole point of this mastery class is actually to um, I, I asked my audience and I asked you guys what was the biggest trouble that you guys had when it came to uh, running Facebook ads, and uh, the majority of my responses that I got were. Um, audience uh, targeting mm -hmm. so probably um, one of the biggest problems that like beginning marketers have have you Robert have you been in a business um, a network marketing business uh, before no it, uh, just starting okay okay so um, I think uh, as, a, as a beginning marketer uh, even online marketing the the biggest problem that um, us marketers have is finding our audience the the people that are willing um, to whip out their credit card right there and you know uh, buy into our opportunity or our offer our product okay so yeah probably one of the biggest um, things that we struggle with okay so um, Robert I'm actually gonna mute you now I'm kind of getting some back feet on my end if that's okay yeah I can go ahead and mute too okay perfect okay so um, I want you guys to remember this. This is what we're going to be covering in the Facebook mastery class. Mastery class. Um, uh, we're going to cover audience targeting. We're going to cover ad copyright and creating content images. Okay, so I sent out a survey um, a couple days ago, and um, like I said, the majority of the responses that I got back were audience targeting uh, being the most difficult aspect that we had when launching the campaign. Okay, but all of these things uh, are very important and you can do them at the same time essentially, okay? Um, but I want you guys to remember that uh, when you're running a Facebook campaign, when you're getting ready to launch a Facebook campaign, um, it takes time, it takes a lot of testing, it takes research um, in order to optimize it correctly, okay? Because if you guys don't take your time, if you get into a rush, uh, you're gonna be essentially just wasting your money, okay? You're gonna be sim uh, simply throwing your money away and it's as simple as that, okay? So um, the first thing we're gonna be talking about, you gotta be patient, okay? This takes time to research. Um, so, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna research uh, your top three competitors, okay? So whoever you are, uh, let's say you're in a network marketing business and um, you want to target, let's say, who's the biggest figure that we know in network marketing? Uh, first one that pops into my head is uh, Eric Worre, okay? So let's just say we go to, Eric Worre's page. And what we're gonna do is, it's, it's very simple. We're gonna, we're gonna study this page, okay? He's one of, no, I'm, I wouldn't say that he's a competitor just because of how big his following is, but he is a figure in the network marketing field, okay? And what this is about is you're doing research, okay? So I want you to study his page. So uh, look up here at his cover photo. I want you to see how bold this is. All of his pictures are bold. It's him on stage. It's him speaking. Um, he's in front of the audience. You know, he's got um, a very simple headline here. The number one research to become a network marketing professional. Join our community. Okay, now if you look at his audience even here in his picture, they're taking notes. They're focused on him. So this is a, a very powerful picture, and it automatically puts him as an authority figure. Okay, so... People that follow Eric Worre are very dedicated to the way that he talks, okay, and the way that he speaks, um, and the way that he does his ad copyright, okay? Uh, they are addicted to that. They, they like to see that, um, and they, uh, they resonate with him well, okay, because people who like Eric Worre are like Eric Worre. They're, they're very similar in personalities, okay? So I want you to find... Um, you know, what you're going to do is you're going to go to his page or, or your competitor's page and you're simply going to find or look through his posts. Okay. Like this video here, here are a few quick tips on how to approach your cold market and how to, how to close successfully. So, um, now he has over a million followers on his page. So this guy, he, he's a very big public figure and, and has been building his following for quite some time. Okay. And I want you guys to realize something that um, you're not just looking at the content and at the ad copyright that he's doing. What you guys are doing is you're actually studying what his 
audience is doing, okay? What they're responding to, what they're not responding to. Um, if they're sharing or they're liking or they're commenting, um, all the above, that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go back in these pages and you're going to study this page, okay? What, it's a very simple title. We'll start with the title of this post. Um, it says, here are a few quick tips on your approach to your cold market and here's how to close successfully. So he found a problem in his marketplace or in his niche and he simply, in this video, in this, simple, in this short four minute video, he tells you how to close successfully uh, when you're approaching cold market. Okay, so the next time you write a headline or if you're targeting people from Eric Worre's page, um, the next time you do this, you need to think about, okay, these people responded very well. He has over 20,000 views on this video um, and they responded very well on the problem and solution type of ad, okay, or type of post. Okay, so when you target people that are interested in Eric Worre, you're going to uh, simply write your campaign favored to solving a problem in that niche, okay? Um, and right now, I, this is, I'm shooting this on a weeknight, um, and we have a couple on here. Um, and I'm gonna get some feedback real quick, so I'm gonna unmute, unmute you guys. And I wanna make sure that it's making sense so far. Okay, and make sure that I'm not going too fast. Uh, Robert, um, you have any insight for me? Just, you know, I, I love how, you know, you explained it, you know, by separating a title and a niche, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, you know. And I think, I think the biggest problem that we have is a lot of us get blinded by all these ads that are, you know, showing up in our news feed and we just keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And, and you know, we're actually looking for opportunities instead of picking apart their individual ads. Okay. So, Hey Mark, mm -hmm. what's going on, man? I didn't see that you were going, that, that you were on. You know, I just popped in a little late. So yeah, that's okay. Hey, I appreciate you hopping on. It's a weird night. It's a Tuesday night, whatever. We're here to uh, hang out. It's all good. Um, so, uh, make sure you guys are doing this, you know, when you're doing your competitor research, like I said, Eric Warrior is a very, is a very big figure in the network marketing niche and it's almost hard to put him as a competitor just because he is so big already. So you guys might need to like come down a category, um, and, and then figure out the, your competitors at that category. Okay. So. Um, but, but this is an example. So when you're doing your, your market research, I want you guys to pick apart their posts. Okay. Pick apart their ads and, and simply look even his video. It's, it's him. The video is stabilized. It's an HD video. He has, um, what is the bottom, uh, the, the captioning on the bottom. Okay. So that's all you're doing is you're, you're studying his page. Okay. Um, and like this, this post right here, this post is, when did he post this? He posted this nine hours ago. Okay. Nine hours. And he has 20,000 uh, views already and you know, close to 300 shares, you know, and comments and whatever. Um, but I want you guys to really focus on how their audience is responding to whatever the post is. Okay. Uh, we'll go up to another one here. Um, it looks like mainly his posts are a lot of videos. And depending on the topic, um, this is a lot of clickbait right here. Like this time machines exist. That's super duper clickbait. You know, like it'll, it'll definitely let people click on his video and see what it's, see what it's all about. Okay. And, and within three hours of this post, he's already had, uh, about 500 comments on this one video. And on this video, nine hours ago, he's only had like 77 comments. Okay, so you guys need to script your ads and form your ads around what kind of posts are getting the most engagement with this audience. Because this is what people like to see. Like maybe a lot of this audience is a conspiracy theorist. You know, like they, they believe in a time machine travel or, you know, time travel or whatever. Like probably not, but just the fact that he says time machines exist. And depending on what his video is saying, is getting massive amounts of feedback already within three hours. Okay, so, and even if you guys have to sit down and you have to watch this video and take notes on the video and figure out how he's talking and figure out what kind of message he's portraying, um, 
that that's going to give you the best results when it comes down to taking or, or creating your own ad. Okay. Um, so let me get this out of the way. We'll come back to our text edit here. So that's the, probably the, the most important things when it comes to researching your competitors. You have to learn the language. You have to learn the demographic. Okay, so are these people, are these people men or women um, that are coming in here and liking this? Are, these, are, you know, are, they, are they mainly men commenting, mainly women commenting? Um, you know, same, you can do uh, a, a big demographic test. And now, instead of coming back here and doing this uh, in an organic fashion, you know, I'm gonna show you guys how to use the audience insights to figure out your demographics as well. Uh, but I just want to show you that this extra amount of research is very important. Okay, um, so let's move on here. Take notes and save sample ads. Okay, so from now on, when you guys are scrolling through your feed, your news feed, I want you to, I, I want you to study each ad that you come up upon. I, I don't want you to look at the content. I don't want you to look what kind of material they're they're offering. I want you to study it. Okay, pick apart the headline. Start at the headline and then go uh, to the image next and figure out what kind of image or if it's a video, figure out if it, what kind of message they're portraying. So you, you have to be able to pick apart your ads um, piece by piece by piece by piece, okay? So here are some questions that you guys need to ask yourself um, when, when you're doing this audience uh, targeting. And, and I recently just ran a, um, an ad myself and I was offering my uh, Facebook marketing playlist, just like I gave to you guys for free. Um, and that was my lead magnet, okay? So I did, a lot of, um, I did a lot of audience research on that topic. Um, and, and to be honest with you, they didn't respond like I wanted them to uh, with my lead magnet. So uh, I'm gonna launch another campaign uh, this next coming week, and I'm actually gonna tweak it just a little bit um, and I'll show you guys that ad here in just a little bit. So here's some questions that you need to ask yourself when you're creating um, your ad, okay, as far as audience targeting. Are your potential clients somebody who is already in the network marketing, uh, or in the network marketing niche, or, or whatever your niche is? If you're in e-commerce or Forex trading or Amazon selling, whatever your guys' niche is, make sure that that client is somebody who is already in network marketing or not. Okay, because you have to tailor it to newbies and you also have to tailor it to veterans that have been in it for a while because you want, you want to attract everybody, okay? You don't want to just, you know, well, this isn't for newbies, this is for experienced marketers only, okay? You, you want to really be sure that, you, you know, you, you, you truly find out what your audience is. Okay, so next question, is your product available uh, to them in their country. A lot of people don't think about this, um, but like the, the affiliate company that I'm in uh, isn't available to people in like um, Japan or, or China, you know, and Facebook offers us such a big pool of people. Um, we have to make sure that our audience and, and our ad is being put in front of the right audience in the right country. Okay, so do these people have an open mind and want to be helped? Probably one of the biggest uh, discrepancies I had when I was first starting network marketing and, and, and an affiliate company, I couldn't find people that already had an open mind. Everybody that I talked to was just like shutting me down, shut me down. It's a scam. It's a get rich quick scheme. Um, you know, this isn't real. You know, this is bogus. And with me just starting, I didn't have any results to show uh, my audience. I didn't have any results to show off. Um, but it's important to find people that already believe in your niche. Um, if, if you're in the weight loss niche, you need people who already believe in the power of weight loss through your method. Okay. So if you're selling a product that offers weight loss through natural ketones or something, make sure that you're targeting that person that already believes that when you take this natural ketone supplement, it's going to help them lose weight, okay? Um, and make sure these people want to be helped because to be honest with you, there are some people out there that don't wanna be helped. They're perfectly happy with their life and uh, they don't, they don't wanna be helped, it's that simple, okay? So if you get somebody that's negative 
or that's closed minded that you're not going to get through to them as well. Um, fourth question, do these people have the funds to purchase your product or opportunity? Um, it, depending on what your price point is, is the market that you need to uh, target. Okay, if you have a $10 ebook that you're offering, um, everybody should be able to afford the $10 ebook. Um, but you have to make sure that it's worth $10. So the value that you put in your, your ebook needs to be worth that or more. Um, and then it needs to be congruent in your ad. Okay. So you need to make them believe that your ebook is worth the $10 that they're going to be spending with you. Okay. Um, now if you have an opportunity, uh, that's worth $2,000, um, there's a cert there's a special way to go about that. Um, and it, it's a very tiered system. You have to start out small, uh, like, kind of like an Ascension model, uh, you know, just like what Apple does with all of their products. Uh, they offer, you know, the, the iMac, uh, the iMac comes in at $2,000. Um, and some, uh, a very small percentage can afford that. Um, and then the next percentage that can't afford the, the iMac come down to the MacBook. The people who can't afford the MacBook come down to the iPad. And, and the people who can't afford that go to the iPhone. Okay, so you need to be very strategic if you have an opportunity that's worth uh, that kind of money. Okay, but that's a different subject. Um, and then the last question, very important, what is the lifetime value of this potential customer or client? Okay, these people need to be able to um, stick with your opportunity or stick with your product the long term instead of just get you a sale. Okay, because as entrepreneurs and as network marketers, we know that people, People who are um, looking to get a quick sale uh, versus people who are looking uh, to create a relationship and build a business are very two different people in our niche. Okay, so we want to be the people that are looking for a lifetime customer value. We're in it to help the customers. We're not in it for self gain. Okay. Um, so before uh, we move on to the next ad copyright. I'm going to go and open the mics up real quick. If you guys want to ask questions so far, uh, I would be glad to answer them. I don't have a question, but, you know, I have another kind of thing, you know, like the PlayStation and, and all that. You know, that's another good um, kind of, uh, you know, everybody uses Apple, but, you know, I, I, I kind of like to use PlayStation, you know, how they got the, the PS1s and then they go up to the PS4, you know, so. Yeah, that's a good. That, that's another good thing, you know. Yeah, and that's exactly it. Um, that's more of an update style. Uh, you know, it's just kind of like Apple has their new uh, softwares that you update every like freaking month. It seems like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so th that's more of an update style uh, because it, it's with the times. And, and yeah, you're right. Um, it all started with the PlayStation One, and then a two, three, you know, four now. Um, and, and they've all evolved within good time. Uh, I don't know if I know anybody with the first PlayStation one. Uh, maybe, maybe I know you, maybe you have the first <laughs> one, you know what I mean? Um, but, uh, I, I think that's more of a, an evolving thing. Um, so, so you guys just have to make sure that when you're offering a product at, at that level, at that much money, um, you, you need to you need to be able to create a front end offer that that almost everybody can afford because at that mm -hmm. point, at that point it's a numbers game uh, you know there's only a certain amount of people that are going to scale up and scale up and scale up so far uh, to get your top product okay so um, Mark do you have any questions man no you know I'm just appreciating how you're breaking it down so that you basically qualify your prospects before before yeah. the process gets well, to the end. And, and essentially, it, you, you almost have to because um, yeah. I, don't, I don't like to waste my money. <laughs> yeah, no yeah. Um, <laughs> this, I'm going to show you guys this ad, actually, uh, that I just ran. And let me get this out of the way. Oh, this stupid thing in my way. Um, this ad that I actually just got done running, um, I was targeting uh, just men. It was just a demographic test. Just men at 18 to 34. And um, I'm not going to say the specific company that I was targeting, but uh, I was targeting a specific company. And, and surprisingly, my ad placements uh, weren't what I thought they were. I got, I got almost 60% of my clicks, my link clicks from Instagram feed. 
Um, and I didn't even tailor it to that. Um, I had no idea. I, I didn't tailor it to that at all. Um, and then there was another section where, where Facebook was placing my ad in an audience network, um, uh, kind of like an instant article style of ad. And I had over 1,500 people reached in that, and I only had three link clicks. So you got to think about how much money that I wasted uh, with that one instant article. Um, so anyways, let, let me get back to the, uh, I'm going to go ahead and mute you guys again. We'll move on. Uh, I'm going to go back into the, the, um, audience insights, the, the business side of audience insights and how you guys can use that, uh, when you're doing your market research. Okay. So that was kind of the way that you can use Facebook um, the, the original Facebook platform to do your audience research. Now let's jump to the business side of Facebook. Um, and we're going to use the exact same person. We're going to use Eric Worre. And I kind of touched on this just a little bit um, in my network marketing playlist, uh, or in my Facebook marketing playlist, I'm sorry. And um, I told you guys to come down here to the, this interest box, um, and we're just going to go ahead and do this. Oops. Uh, stay over three. Uh, I wonder if I can't. Okay, yeah. Okay, Eric Worry. Okay, so what this is, I don't know if you guys know, once you type Eric Worry in, uh, this is his Facebook page. Okay, this is um, everybody that's interested in his Facebook page. And let's see, his Facebook page has over a million people in it. Um, let me see, we might even go back and try to search. Uh, we'll try to search his actual network marketing network marketing. What did that say? Pro come down here and we'll see what these say. That's not right. Okay. Hang with me here. We'll try to get this up and we'll see if this is there. Yeah. Eric worry. Okay. So uh, says roughly that there are 300,000 people in this um, niche that are monthly active, okay, that are active monthly on Facebook, okay? And this is a great way, instead of going through here and figuring out if these people are male or female commenting on here, what, what they're saying, yes, that is an important part, uh, but you can access it very quickly uh, in, in the business side of it, okay? So as you can see here, uh, these monthly active users are 70% women, okay? And, and then you're going to go over here to the age brackets. Um, and looks like, let's see, 50, almost 80% of the women in this specific audience is from the ages of 25 to 54, okay? So when you guys are creating your ad, you need to come back here and you need to go, okay, you, you, take notes to write this down and you're going to go, um, 70% of this audience is women. Um, and then almost 40% it looks like, or just a little over 30% are from the ages of 35 to 44. Okay. So, uh, you need to tailor your ad and your ad copyright, um, to women. Um, women respond differently for men. Uh, I don't understand women. <laughs> I don't, you know, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't understand women very well, but, um, I think that it's important to understand your audience. You really have to break it down. Okay. Um, and then we're going to go up here to this page likes, and you're going to go through these tabs whenever you do your audience research. Um, and on these page likes essentially is, is when you create your ad, there are, um, numerous interests that you can put in uh, as far as your audience placement. And a lot of them are for um, these pages right here. So anybody that likes this page, Network Marketing Pro Eric Worre, they also like this page, okay? Kate McShay, Sarah Robbins, um, Direct Selling Association, Ray Higdon, Smarter Network, okay? So what you're gonna do is I would take See this relevancy score right here? The pages that are most likely to be relevant to your audience, number one, obviously Eric Worre, number two, Kate McShay, three, Sarah Robbins. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go in to each of these pages, okay? And you're going to pick apart the pages just like we did with um, Eric Worre. Okay, you're gonna scroll through a page, you're gonna see what type of um, people are on here, what kind of post she's making, look, a lot of uh, more videos, um, lifestyle, motivational, um, quotes, 
Okay, so you're going to study these. See how much um, action she has. See how much engagement she has. Um, what kind of posts she's doing. HD videos. All that good stuff. The same thing how we broke down our Eric Worries. Okay, so gosh, dang that stupid pop-up. Okay, we're going to wait for it to go away. <laughs> and then we're going to exit out of this and go on to the next one. And you're going to do the same thing for Sarah Robbins. You're going to come in here. Um, you're going to click on her page and you're simply just going to study it. Okay. And now when you guys are studying this, I want you guys to take notes on how, um, their ad is written. Very simple. Watch her videos, see how she's talking, what messages she's looking. It looks like she's, um, promoting a book. Maybe that she, yeah, Sarah Robbins, her book. Um, she's probably going to have uh, a link in the comments or something like that. She's going to give you some sort of call to action at the end. So, what you guys are essentially doing is you're just figuring out your your customers. You have to find your audience and you have to break down the language, the demographic, and exactly what your audience is looking for. And I promise you, your ads will be successful if you guys do that. Okay. Um, let's pull back up the text edit here. You guys just uh, give me a second. Um, the sun's going down here. It's getting pretty dark. So I'm going to um, step off and uh, turn the lights on real quick and we'll move on. Okay. All right. So um, that's kind of a. We only got an hour on these darn Zoom calls um, when you have the the free account. Um, so we've used up about thirty minutes of it so far. Um, and I think, like I was saying in the beginning, the audience targeting is probably one of the most difficult things that we struggle with as marketers when we're first starting out. Um, and, and it's very simple um, in the end. All you have to do is you have to break down um, and, and pick apart their ads and pick apart the audience and figure out what kind of demographic they are. What kind of books do they like to listen to? What kind of podcasts are they interested in? Um, just things that are completely, uh, you're, you're going to take all this information that's up in the air and you're going to put it on paper and then you're, you're going to script out your ad um, in order to tailor it to that audience. Okay, so audience targeting is kind of scary at first, but if you guys just take your time, remember patience. I don't know if you guys listen to Gary Vee, uh, but Gary Vee always says your patience, uh, your lack of patience is keeping you broke. Okay, and that's true. You guys have to take your time on this, and you, you, you really have to break down that audience. Okay, so let's move on. We're going to go to ad copyright. Um, and, and I don't know if you guys know this or not, um, but Facebook ads, a lot of people try to be so uh, eccentric with their ads. They try to be so detailed with their copyright. And, and it's not anything that has to – you don't have to have a freaking degree um, to, write a, to write a Facebook ad. And Facebook ads actually convert best at a fifth-grade reading level. Okay, fifth grade. It's very basic, all right? Um, and now – let me move this out of the way. Show you guys a little something here. Might have to go. Let me go to Safari real quick and I'll open up this. Okay. So guys, this is a... Not very many people know this at all, um, but this HemingwayApp.com, this is a tool that I use, um, and it'll actually tell you what's really cool about this is you can actually um, put your ad in here. You simply just clear out this field right here, and you put your ad copy in there, and essentially it'll tell you what grade of reading level it is. Okay, it'll break it down for you. It tells you how many adverbs, all the use of passive voice. This isn't a literature class by any means, but I want you guys to understand how important it is that every little detail when you're creating your Facebook ads is very important. Okay, so use this HemingwayApp.com. Um, type in your ad in there. It'll give you 
what grade level of of ad copy that is okay so um, let's get this out of the way uh, we'll pull up the text edit again that's a little gold nugget for you guys I I don't very I don't share that very often with hardly anybody um, and I don't know if you guys know about that uh, but I share it with very few people um, I've invested a lot of money into Facebook marketing and and the, the copyright um, seems to be very tricky for some people uh, so Model your competitors. This is, the, this is what you're going to be doing when you're scrolling through your feed and you see the sponsored ads. Uh, very simply, don't reinvent the wheel, guys. Screenshot that ad. Uh, study their copyright. Um, and make sure you, you model it. Okay, Don't copy. Don't copy their ad. Model it. You have to tweak it and make it yours. Okay, Tweak it to where it's catering to your, or your opportunity, your product, your offer, etc. Okay, so... Uh, a few things, your, ad, your ads need to be easy to read. Uh, so like I said, use that fifth grade reading level. Um, everybody needs to be able to read it. Um, read them out loud and have someone else read your ad before you launch. Uh, I had at least, I have at least three to five people read my ad. Um, I, I have them read it to me, read it to themselves. Um, you know, just have your spouse read it or, or your girlfriend or, or your neighbor or whoever, your mom, dad, I don't, I don't really care. Uh, have somebody read it to you. Um, because it, it needs to be heard and, and I want you guys to realize something that when you're targeting your audience you're you're, you're targeting yourself okay essentially um, you, you're targeting the same people as you okay so when somebody reads you your ad uh, you have to be able to resonate with it you have to be able to listen to it and you have to be able to say you know what does that make sense or it doesn't make sense uh, I want to change this sentence I want to change that okay so have somebody read your ad uh, before you launch it Okay, so um, next thing, create an ad that's intriguing to your audience, and what's the best way to start a conversation? So to you guys, how do you guys start a conversation with somebody new? A, a, a complete stranger. You guys walk up to somebody. How do you start a conversation? I, I don't know what I'm I've been. Uh, Mark, go ahead first. No, I was yeah. just going to say, just walk up, smile, and ask how their day is going. Oh, ask. It's the question. The question yeah. game. The question is the perfect way to start a conversation. Okay, and essentially, when you're creating your ad, what you want to do is is you're getting you're intriguing your your audience. Whoever your your audience is, you're starting a conversation with them. Are you're saying, hey, are you struggling in getting leads into your Facebook uh, or leads in your business? Um, you know, and then you you simply create a solution to that. Okay, so the best way to start a conversation is ask a question. It's that simple. Ask a question. Okay, um, because uh, what you're going to do, just like I asked you guys this survey, uh, I put a survey in the Facebook group, um, and, and I asked you guys a simple question. What's the hardest thing you have when running a Facebook campaign? Um, and and um, the majority of it was, audience targeting okay yeah um and, and this is how i'm optimizing this whole video you know i i'm giving you guys the answers and i hope that i'm helping solve your problems okay so also uh here's some questions to ask when it comes to your copyright uh does my ad flow do the, the sentence structure flow do the words flow uh is it too complex is it too simple um use that hemingwayapp.com okay it'll really help you um, get you, get your uh, ad copyright where it needs to be and at the level that it needs to be in. Is your ad congruent with your headline text? Okay, this is very big. I'm gonna pull up um, my ad that I had. Oh my gosh, this pop up! I swear. Okay, so uh, let's go here, and we're going to let's do this. Facebook desktop newsfeed, and we're gonna see my ad right here okay so this is an ad I, that I just finished uh, your buyers are out there different country state province etc it doesn't matter you just have to know how to find them once you learn this simple campaign setup your ads will be bringing you targeted leads every single day and don't worry your budget is safe okay so it's very simple uh, to the point and what I'm doing is I said hey your buyers are out there it doesn't matter what kind of country state province they're in uh, you just have to know how to find them so is your ad copyright, this right here, is your ad copyright congruent, oh, 
is your ad copyright congruent with your headline text. And this is your headline down here. Um, gosh dang it. Bless America. Okay. And of, okay, good. And what I, what I did is um, I gave them a problem. So I think in this particular company, uh, that I was targeting their their company just acquired new customers in, in a different country So I wanted to portray to them that hey, it doesn't matter where your buyers are. Okay, because essentially uh, They got new customers in a new country. So that those are their buyers. They're in a new country blah 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 I wanted to give them a Facebook buyers uh, a find your buyers Facebook guide um, So I, I just made my ad copyright congruent with my headline. Okay, and then so simply do the same thing. Make sure that your uh, headline description is congruent with your headline, okay? So I put success on a budget, targeted leads pouring into your business every single day without breaking the bank, okay? So um, what I'm telling them is this Facebook guide is going to find your buyers and don't worry, you can do it on a budget, okay? Because who doesn't like to have quality leads coming in uh, for the least amount of money, okay? so. Let's go back to the text edit here. Okay. Um, probably one of the biggest things you guys have to remember is you have to stay congruent from the start of your ad to the finish. Everything has to flow. It has to make sense from the moment somebody reads the first word of your ad to the last word of your sales funnel. Okay, because it, it all has to be congruent. The message that they're receiving, the solution that they're going to receive to the problem all has to be the same. It all has to be in a timeline manner, okay? Um, is my ad easy to read for my audience? Am I speaking the language of my audience? Again, uh, getting into that targeting, and then do they understand what they will be getting when they click, okay? Be very clear um, wh when you come to your ad copy right now. Also, I want you guys, I don't know, some of you guys, do you know uh, Russell Brunson? Yep. Yes, Click Funnels. Okay, so have you, got, have you guys read his book, his books yet? Yeah. I haven't yet, but um, I, I probably will. Okay, Robert, a um, lot of golden nuggets uh, Russell Brunson gives away in those books um, as far as, especially in Expert Secrets on, on how to target your audience. Um, and, and what he says is that, it, uh, Mark, you might relate with this, but uh, you have to have a curiosity hook. Okay, you have to have something. The, the, the old phrase, a curiosity killed the cat, um, is very true. Okay, people want to know mm -hmm. how. People want to know how they're going to uh, find their buyers. Okay, so in my ad, what I did was once you learn this simple campaign setup, your ads will be bringing you targeted leads every single day, and don't worry, your budget is safe. Okay, so um, the problem is is Maybe they're overspending on their ads and they're not getting targeted leads into your business. Um, and I'm going to show them a simple campaign setup that will solve that problem. Okay. So essentially, make sure you guys have a curiosity hook. Okay. Here's your finders, find your buyer's Facebook guide. Um, and this one simple campaign setup uh, is going to teach you how to get targeted leads in. Okay. So make sure you guys have a curiosity hook uh, when it comes to creating your ad copyright, okay? Um, so that's that's the majority of the ad copyright. I want you guys to really use that HemingwayApp.com. Um, I use it with just about every app that, or every ad that I run um, because it does help, it, it does make a difference, okay? Um, and then on to the last thing, images and content. Uh, this was the least, um, problem area as far as um, my responses from my survey that I sent out um, and, and the images and the content. And I think um, it, it's overlooked because people think, yeah, I can, I can post a picture. Uh, I can take a picture and post it and, and not have a problem and it's going to bring in leads. Um, but what's funny about this is this is kind of a, um, I created this uh, image right here with an app called Pixlr. Um, and Pixlr has these cool different features that you can, uh, you know, add these like overlays in the border and you can do a split shot of two different things. Um, and <laughs> 
I think that people overlook it so much. What, what was funny about this is I made this picture and, and I wasn't even catering it to my Instagram feed. But I think because of the demographic, you know, the overlays, the bright colors, the circle here, um, it did very well on Instagram, uh, on Instagram because of that platform. Um, because Instagram is simply a, an app that you scroll through and you look at pictures all day long. And I think that this ad really caught their eye and made them stop scrolling through their Instagram feed. Um, and like I said, I got, I got almost 60% of my link clicks um, from this. And guys, this wasn't a very big uh, campaign. I didn't, I didn't spend a lot of money on this. I spent $10 a day, and uh, that's about it. Um, and I'll show you guys the results at the end of this uh, Facebook webinar class. Okay, so I want you guys to understand that it doesn't have to, to be um, catered to every sort of platform, but make sure that you are following the standards. Okay, you have to have a 1200 by 628 photo. Okay, and I don't, I don't know if you guys know, but you can, you can use Canva.com. A lot of people know about Canva, um, and it's very simple. You can upload your own images, um, but, you know, creating those images and, and using a different editing apps are very important first, and then make sure you get that right picture size. Okay, um, let me ask you some, what, what kind of pictures do you see um, in professional Facebook ads. You have to have HD pictures. You can't have low quality pictures. Okay. This was um, a 1080p picture that I had taken on this end, and this was a screenshot. Um, so it was obviously very clear. But uh, I added some filters and I added a blur around this because I wanted the focus to be on my phone. Um, so it's very important to use HD pictures when you're doing uh, your images and your videos. Okay. Now make sure your ad or your picture is congruent with your ad. Okay. So right here, I told them that, Hey, I'm going to be bringing you targeted leads, uh, every single day and don't worry, your budget is safe. So this picture shows I got 1,036 leads for a hundred dollars. Um, and you know, when I first started running this, uh, I had a bunch of people coming up to me uh, asking me, you know, how did you do that? How did you get a thousand and thirty six leads for a hundred bucks? And guys, you can see how because I just showed you the how important it is to uh, research your audience. You guys have to break down your audience. You really have to take some time. It took me um, the first time or the first time I ever launched a Facebook ad, and and it's specifically specifically this one. Um. It took me about three days to do some audience research um, on that. Scrolling through Facebook, uh, going through my competitors' news feeds, screenshotting ads, whatever. It took me about three days to figure out how my audience uh, reacts to certain posts and certain ad copyrights and pictures and whatever. Um, and it's very important that you guys are doing the same. Take your time. Take your time. Be patient. Okay. All right. Um, for videos. Use the proper size. Again, um, when you go in and create a new ad into your Facebook, if you, depending on what sort of, uh, let's go here, let's go to the next one. Depending on what, which one that you use, a, a slideshow or a single video, I believe they might be the same size. Let me look here. I can't, I can't memorize all these sizes. Yeah, right here, okay. so. Resolution, it even tells you, here's, look, check this out. Recommended video specs, Facebook gives it to you right here. It needs to be an MP4 file, uh, needs to be 720p at least, uh, 2.3 gigabytes max, widescreen, 16 by nine, so that's good to know, and 60 minutes max, and Instagram is a minute long, okay, max. So whenever you guys are choosing what, whatever type of image or, or, or video you want to do, they'll give you the exact size you need right here. Okay, um, and even when you do a carousel ad, it's very important you're going to have multiple images in there, and they don't tell you on this one. Um, and I believe they're 800 by 800 when you do um, this. Nope, I'm sorry, 1080 by 1080. Okay, so Facebook always switches their images size no matter what you're doing. Uh, so pay attention to these sizes because Facebook actually places your ads. Um, they, they optimize your ads based on your images size. So 
I, I don't have an example of this. I was looking for it for about an hour today for this, but I've seen some ads over here, like on the right bar that are actually, their images are actually cut off because they don't use the right size. So essentially you could, you could lose your, your branding logo. You could lose your, your product. You could lose, you know, whatever it is, if you don't have the right size image, uh, it could be cut off based on where Facebook automatically places, um, your ads. Okay. So make sure you're using the right size. It's very important. Um, must be HD. Yeah. 720 at least you guys seen that. Um, and then what successful ad have you ever seen with <laughs> 240 uh, P resolution? Okay. You guys have to use HD. It's very important. Um, and then I like to use, if I do a video, it's gotta be a video of yourself. Okay. Or some sort of slideshow or some sort of backstory of yourself. Um, that's it. I mean, it, you guys can't be too complicated. You can't sell something that's not yours. Um, and, and people don't buy products. I want you to know that people don't buy products. People buy people. Okay. If you are ever looking into a new opportunity or if you're ever looking into a new offer or product, you need to do research on your, um, on your sponsor or on the person that's promoting the ad because essentially that person is going to be the one that's helping you through the product. Okay. So when you guys do a video of yourself and you're promoting a video of yourself, it actually creates a personal connection with your audience uh, automatically. Okay. Because they're getting to know you as a person um, and, and they can resonate with you. Okay. And, that, and that's what finding your audience is all about. So that's what, that's what all, all this, that's what all this content is all about is finding your audience and optimizing your ads for that campaign. Okay. So, um, this is a, a kind of a little gold nugget I gave you guys. We're getting to the end of this, uh, mastery class, but, uh, I wanted to show you guys this. This is kind of a good video structure. And Robert, um, if you guys are, if you guys get this book, expert secrets, I have it right here. Um, this is kind of, uh, like the bridge video, um, that he did. Uh, the, he, he creates a bridge video in his sales funnels, you know, and this is how uh, he does it. Pretty close, at least. Getting some feedback somewhere. This is how he does it. Pretty close. Um, so this is how your videos need to be structured and keep them very short. The attention span of your market today, uh, Snapchat ruined all of us like 10 seconds. So um, make sure you guys uh, keep your videos short um, and, and make sure they're intriguing. Make sure you have an introduction, uh, a problem give an example of a problem that, that was similar, um, and then how you solved your problem, how your product and opportunity is going to solve their problem, and then a call to action, okay? So um, that's about all I have for you guys. Uh, I hope I'm not forgetting anything. Um, I wanted to, uh, I think all of these coincide uh, with audience targeting, and I wanted to tailor this mastery class towards that specifically because it is a it is a problem and it can be kind of intimidating if you guys don't like uh, if you guys don't know how to do that um, you know and I'm not saying that I'm the best at it uh, but I do take my time with it because I realized that um, for the first three months I was doing Facebook ads I was really in a hurry um, I was just typing in random names of you know public figures and hoping my ad would convert. And it's, uh, that's not how it works. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you guys. If you guys uh, have any questions or, or comments, uh, maybe I can help you out. Um, yeah, the, the mic's open. Right. Well, I was going to say, um, I was reading an article the other day about the videos using one-to-one -one ratio. Okay. Uh, and what they're talking about, especially if you look at Gary Vee's videos, He's got, so when it's silenced, um, he's got basically the, the, what he's saying, the dialogue going along the bottom, but then he's also got a headline across the top. Yes. And they're saying, they're talking about how much engagement he gets based on, not the fact that he's just Gary V, but, but the ads are so eye-catching. It's a science, man. Um, I actually, yeah. I, I actually seen an ad today. I was scrolling through my Facebook and I seen this ad, and at the bottom of it um, was was just like a simple ticker. You know, like if you guys use iMovie, there's like a, a scrolling feed along the bottom of this. 
um, right. had that was saying the same thing, kind of like the Gary V and saying how much engagement he was getting. Um, and, and there was like a little call to action every once in a while in there, click the button below or whatever. And it really caught my eye and I'm like, holy cow, like my next video I need to shoot, I need to put like a little, a border around my video and say, Hey, right. You know, it, it's, it makes it more intriguing. Yeah. So that is, that is pretty cool. Um, Oh, oh, I know what I wanted to do. Um, I wanted to show you guys how to retarget real quick um, because retargeting is probably one of the best um, tools you can have in your arsenal as far as um, when it comes to running Facebook ads. So when you first run a Facebook ad and you're sending people to a website or whatever off of Facebook, Facebook records that if you have your pixel set up properly. Okay, so, um, and it did this to me earlier. I gotta come back here. And uh, I'm gonna do, let me get my face out of the way here. We're gonna go and create an ad and uh, you're gonna use use ad create tool. Sometimes you can use the power editor. If you guys are getting to a point where you're advanced uh, with your Facebook ads, use the power editor, okay? Because uh, the power editor gets more specific and I can do a class later on about the power editor, but for now, we'll just use the ad creation tool and we'll use that. Okay, so once you pick your objective, let's just say we want conversions. Um, and we'll come down here and we'll just keep it conversions name. And what we're gonna do is when you go to, the, to your audience tab, let this load real quick. When you create a new audience, or you have the option to create a new audience. Goodness gracious, taking forever to load. Okay, this little, this little drop down arrow right here where it says create new, you're gonna hit custom audience, and here is your options to retarget, okay? So if you, have a, if you guys have an email list, I believe of a, of a thousand subscribers or bigger, it's gotta be, it's gotta have an audience of at least a thousand people in it. Um, you can take those emails and you can actually upload a file in here uh, where it says add customers from your own file or copy paste data or import from MailChimp. Um, you guys can actually copy and paste those email lists in there and Facebook will create a lookalike audience um, for those people. Okay, so a really powerful retargeting method using your already subscribers to get, to get back in the door, uh, very powerful. If you guys are sending uh, your audience to a, an external website, you can come on here to website traffic um, and simply type in your domain name um, and what pixel that it's tracking on. Um, I hope the pixel is not too confusing for you guys. It was for me at first. Um, so very cool retargeting trick. I wanted to show you guys how to do that. Most of you guys probably already know, but uh, retargeting is very powerful when it comes to ad campaigns. Um, so uh, okay, I'll get off my uh, soapbox again, and I'll let you guys let you guys talk. 